Chandler has always been a funny guy. Born in Brooklyn, New York, at 17 he took to the stage at a Boston comedy club and discovered he was a natural comic. He landed a reoccurring role on The Cosby Show, but it was becoming a writer and later cast member on Saturday Night Live that really set him up for big things. The era of the Adam Sandler movie was born and he began writing and starring in a string of hit movie comedies that were variations of the dim-witted lead role. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, The Waterboy, and one of my favourites, The Wedding Singer, co-starring Drew Barrymore. So why did she want to work with Sandler? I wanted to do a love story with somebody who I would really be in love with, and I would really be in love with Adam Sandler. It seems she loved him a lot, going on to co-star with him again in the adorable 50 First Dates. Famous for slapstick comedy roles and not-so-bright characters, often with a bad temper or short fuse, he began to take on more serious, sensitive roles, like the loving father figure in Big Daddy. I'm a little different in this movie. I, uh, it's just like uh, I doing a, just played the part the way I thought I should play it. It's not like I'm changing my whole career. I'm just just this one particular movie. I acted a different way. Initially, Sandler thought he couldn't pull off the role, but after being offered the chance to rewrite the script he decided it was worth a shot. We read a script that, we, that was a good movie, but I didn't think I'd be too good at it. And then um, we talked to the president of the company, Amy Pascal, and she said that me and my buddy could rewrite it and tailor it more for uh, what I th think I could do. And we just did, we did it like that. They laid down a nice script up top, and then we, we kind of did our own comedy with it. He must be glad he did take the role. It was a huge success, raking in more than $160 million at the box office. Famous for creating wacky characters, in Little Nicky he did it again, this time as Satan's demented son. But he's particularly great at, uh, at creating an entire character that has a whole reality to him, like Bobby Boucher in The Waterboy and now Little Nicky. So it's this full-blown character, you know, that just sprung out of him that has a whole world, has a whole likes and dislikes, and, you know, a, a, and, and uh, a, whole, a whole sort of feel to them that's just completely unique and a whole way of talking, whole everything. <laughs> it turns out the, uh, my character got hit in the face with a shovel by one of my brothers, so my mouth is uh, a little further to the left than usual. To complete the character transformation, Sandler prefers to perform as many of his own stunts as possible. It's obvious when you see the movie, when it's Adam actually flying, he's doing things that, you know, are pretty significant stunts. In the, wire, in the wires and in the harnesses, he's flying up 50 feet, landing on a dime. It's pretty intense, it's pretty fun. Glad I'm not doing it. For his role in the hilarious prison comedy, The Longest Yard, how much research did Sandler do? Zero. Nothing. Sandman would just wake up, show up on the set, they'd throw these tight pants on me. I'd stumble out there drunk, throw a ball, and then they'd put me back in my trailer. Instead, he likes to draw on his improvisational skills that he acquired while studying drama at uni and from his stand-up comedy days. He loves to just get on set and wing it. I do whatever the hell I want. I know. You're That's Adam Sandler. Time, you are Adam Sandler. Who can you say no to me? Want. No one can say no to you. Just my mama. Just your mama. She does it a lot. In 1999, Adam formed his own production company, Happy Madison Productions, which has written and produced many of his hit movies. He is loved for his loyalty to his mates, frequently casting his friends like Rob Schneider, David Spade and Chris Rock in his productions. They're the only people who actually like me, that's why I stick around with them, and, 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 I, and I think they feel the same about me. I, I, not too many people like any of us. Now, Adam, that's not true. One of the reasons actors want to work with Sandler time and time again is because he encourages his actors to take risks and try new things. Well, I must say, man, Adam Sandler as a producer and as an actor is really, for me, an actor's dream because he's, he, he's daring, he'll take chances, he'll allow you to take chances, he's fearless, and I think that's something that many directors I've worked with, in some ways reminds me a little bit of Quentin Tarantino, um, where, you know, hey, we'll do it one way, and then he'll say, okay, just go for it. So I really like the fact that Adam gives me a lot of artistic license and a lot of artistic freedom. And I think there's a thin line between quote unquote genius moments in films and quote unquote failing moments in films. Adam encourages you to walk that line. That's why I love working with Adam because he's very generous with all the other actors and he really wants to see them shine. 
and he's also, he's the best audience, you know. Um, whenever I can make him laugh, uh, it just feels really good. I mean, he makes me really laugh. He's one of the funniest guys I know. So if I can make him laugh, then, then, I, then I know I'm doing something right. The only hard thing is that he does laugh off camera, and then it gets hard for me to keep a straight face. He co-starred with another good friend, Kevin James, on I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry. And there are a few things he wanted to achieve with this movie. A, I want them to be more open-minded about people and let people be who they are and be cool with that. B, I want Kevin James to go on to great things. Aw, the Sandman. Look it out for me. I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry also gave Adam the chance to repay a favour to ex-Saturday Night Live castmate Dan Aykroyd. I gave Adam, I think, uh, his first job in the movies as a... Uh, uh, in Coneheads, he sold me my, uh, sold Beldar's uh, papers to him for uh, for college, for uh, you know, to the, so that he could uh, he could work in this country or on this planet. So that I guess is the history of the Film Association. Of course, I was a big fan of Adam on, on Saturday Night Live, and uh, we've only done one one before. Uh, he had me join him on the uh, the uh, film with Drew Barrymore, Fifty First Dates. And then now ask me to do this, and, uh, and I hope as time goes on, he will think of me as uh, one of his repertory players. Uh, I like that old-fashioned idea that uh, when you do a movie, uh, you bring the same people back to play uh, characters as much as Frank Capra did, or, or many, or Hitchcock, many of the, the great directors and great producers. Uh, and I, I number Adam uh, among the great, great producers of our time. Uh, so I hope that I can be part of the Happy Madison Repertory Company going forward and, and do some more work. Sandler has played a lot of big kids in his time, but Bedtime Stories was the first film he made that was aimed at kids. So why did he feel it was the right time to make a family movie? It was a good time. I like kids. They're usually pretty fun to hang with. Um, they make me feel smarter. Now that he's married and has two daughters, Sandler admits that the way he looks at movies has changed. Yeah, I saw something the other day uh, um, that has to do with family, and I, I definitely clicked a lot more with that movie now that I have a kid. And I was, when the, there were scenes about the kids, I got more emotional. So, yeah, I guess the way I feel about movies is different. Now. In Funny People, Sandler played a successful stand up comic who discovers he's suffering from a terminal illness. The role was darker than we're used to seeing from Sandler. The director was his good friend, Judd Apatow, and Sandler found their relationship really helped his performance. I felt comfortable, and I also know Apatow is incredibly funny, and he, you know, we do know each other. Besides just being roommates, we have had a friendship for 20 years and, and a mutual admiration, uh, uh, and we like hanging out. So that absolutely makes you feel uh, funnier and more uh, uh, open to try things out that could you could fall on, uh, on your uh, whatever it's called. Well, Adam and I have worked together a few times. I, you know, he brought me into Punch Up, The Wedding Singer, and Happy Gilmore. My wife, uh, Leslie Mann, was in Big Daddy. And, and Adam and I and Robert Smigel wrote, You Don't Mess With the Zohan. But I always wanted to direct Adam and to direct him in something that was very personal to me because I, I know him so well and I, I felt like we could do something interesting together. To prepare for the role, Judd made Adam get back up on stage and work as a stand-up comic. I love being up there talking about Judd's genitals. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I liked it at times and there were times when I was a nervous wreck about it. I'd be psyched in the daytime and then when we were driving <laughs> to the club, I'd be like, what are we doing this <laughs> It was fun. I'm glad I did it. I liked it. I used to be addicted to it, but I needed to get on stage as much as possible. I remember we would do like two, <clears throat> two or three shows a night, and it was that choice you would make. You'd have a good set on your second one. You'd be like, okay, I can call it a night, or should I go do that third one and risk doing bad and being miserable all <laughs> night long? And then you're just such an addict. You're like, all right, I'm going to go do that third show. And then you get up there, you don't do good, and you're just mad at yourself all night long. Whilst Funny People's main characters are comedians, it's got some pretty dramatic moments. Adam found performing the emotional scenes in the film difficult. You never want to do those things, those, the, those days that come up that are heavy scenes. I, I don't look forward to it. Other actors might, uh, but I, I know it's uh, important to the movie and I commit 100% and um, happy when it's over. 
However, on the other hand, when his character made jokes out of life's difficult moments, it came naturally. I, I definitely, uh, like every other comedian, look, for, look, look to get a laugh in there as quick as possible when something uh, unfortunate comes around or tragic or anything that requires you to, to feel. I like running to, to, the, to the joke and uh, yeah, that's, 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 I guess it's a defense that uh, every comedian has. Let's just get, let's get to the laughing quick. It's awesome, you know, he's, he's literally one of the people who like directly made me want to start doing this type of thing and uh, to, to, to get to work with that person, and it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? He has a home in New York, but spends most of his time living with his family in celebrity central LA. However, he tries to keep a low profile away from the paparazzi as much as possible. Sometimes uh, uh, people won't leave you alone and all of a sudden you're America or uh, the whole world is like, all right, get out of here, we've seen you enough. Um, it's out of your control sometimes. I try to hide out as much as I can. Adam Sandler has definitely come a long way. From a class clown to becoming a comedy great. Ranked number two on Forbes magazine's 2009 list of top Hollywood earners, raking in $54.7 million. Stay tuned to Star Picks for more of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.